Taliban imposes face coverings on female students and teachers in new policy. The Taliban has revealed a controversial Sharia compliant dress code for Afghan school students, sparking outrage and criticism. The bill, composed of five chapters and 13 articles, would require boys to wear traditional Afghan dress in light blue or green, depending on the age. Girls face stricter restrictions, as the draft proposes that female students under sixth grade wear a dark ivory uniform with a white hijab, while older students must wear an olive green outfit with a black headscarf. Although the Taliban says that they are still consulting and writing the final version of the draft, the proposal has been met with criticism from many activists and students. Alongside the dress code, the Taliban has imposed other stringent measures, including banning women and family from open-air restaurants in the city of Herat and ordering the closure of NGO-supported education centers, many of which cater to girls' education, at close to uh, Helmand and Kandahar provinces on April 17th, until further notice. So there's a bunch of updates here. Um, First of all, there's they're finally coming up with their new uniform policy, and it looks like it's going to be stricter than what people originally um, thought. And then there's been a few updates in some specific places, like in Herat, they just banned women and all families in general from open-air restaurants. And then in Kandahar, they started closing down NGO-supported schools, which is going to be like most of the education available to students um, because, you know, they were teaching girls and stuff. Um, so, you know, this is a thought I have. And, you know, you can call me out if I'm very off base, Armin. But is it possible that them putting forward a stricter uniform for girls might actually get girls back in school sooner? You know, I you don't see know. what I'm saying? My, yeah, maybe. I don't want to. I don't. Yeah, but it just feels so dirty to say like, "Oh, this might be a good thing." You I know, know, I don't want to say that. It just feels I so know. gross. Um, because I remember mean, the, thing, the reason is, why is they opened they opened up girls' schools for one day and then shut them down again on the same day, and they cited because of improper uniform and hijab. But we don't even know. Okay, so here's let's let's that let's could just be the excuse. Compart let's compartmentalize, okay? If the them having dress codes like this and covering it up more makes them able to go to school, we have to choose the lesser of two evil, okay? Less freedom of um on what to wear, okay, but more freedom to get educated. We education is a higher priority than the freedom to wear what you want. Again, that is also very important, uh, but education is more important for girls, right? And ultimately, so education the, would be a bridge to get there at some point, honestly. Yes. So if, if again, that's a big if, if that is the trade-off, then I would say go for it so that they could get educated. But we don't even know if that's a trade-off, okay? When they might like because these people might get them um, this extra coverage and no freedom to wear what you want, and at the same time, no school, right? So we don't even know if that's a trade off. Also, bar making these, you know, trade offs with the Taliban is normalizing dealing. So at the same time, it's the reality on the ground, and nobody seems to be able to defeat the Taliban. So you have to deal with them. But at the same time, dealing with them normalizes dealing with such, you know, evil. It's negotiating with terrorists, right? But again, you, we might say idealistically we don't want to negotiate with terrorists ever. But if there is no no alternative, like Taliban has, even the U.S. Army wasn't able to remove them. So what the hell are we going to do? Right? Are we going to just like not give in forever? It seems like they won. They won. They, they took over. There's nothing that could defeat them right now. Um, and we cannot just let the Afghan people just not have education, food, medicine. For how long are we going to go uh, with that, uh, with, with that kind of attitude, knowing that there's no end in sight for the Taliban? Like at some point, we have to accept the new realities on the ground. But again, I don't even know. I don't even know if this is going to get the girls into school. If it's going to increase the likelihood, 
that the girls are going to get education, then I think we should unfortunately accept it. Yeah. Accept it. Like, okay, fine, fine. Just do it. Just do it. Whatever. Just, just let them get the girls in school. We are getting, we are losing every moment, every month that these girls are not educated. You have, you have no idea. The, the hit, the financial hit, the potential for Afghanistan, the future of Afghanistan, every single month that these girls are left out of school. It's a freaking tragedy. It's a disaster. And, and Afghanistan needs to invest in its human capital the most. It's essential for Afghanistan. And these are, these are, th this is the education and these are the resources that you're not going to get back. Like it's not like, oh, finally, we're girls are getting educated. The months that you have lost are the months that you're never going to get back. Early childhood development and then after, and all of this is so key to the country's future. And none of this is being invested. Everything, so it's, it's, it's disastrous. So we're losing every moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, an entire generation. Of lost potential yeah. and economic benefit to the entirety of the Afghan nation. Yeah. Yes. So Darko is saying that maybe there was an international pressure and Taliban are deciding to make a compromise. If that is the case, just let accept this, accept this, and let the girls in school because ASCP just do whatever mm -hmm. it takes to get the girls in school. Mm -hmm. Again, nothing is more important than education. You know, I would just like to point out the absolute chaos well, of our live chat. Because we have Rahasia saying, you're trying to destroy Hinduism. Meanwhile, Balat over here is, you atheists don't even believe in objective morality. Don't lecture us about Muslims and how to treat our women. <laughs> wow, what a self-report. <laughs> yeah. Don't lecture us about how to treat Muslims. Okay, that sounds very genocidal and dangerous. I mean, do we even need to make an argument against these people? We're seeing how Hinduism treats Muslims and women. No, no, that was a Muslim guy saying that. Oh, let me bring it up. You atheists don't even believe in objective morality. Okay, that makes it even worse. Don't lecture us Muslims about how to treat our women. Oh, wait. This is even worse than I thought. Our women. Okay, well... I'm glad. I'm glad you treat you, you. You're treating them like they are your property. Like you, you can see that in the statement. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna lecture you about how disgusting Islam is and its attitude towards women. And there's nothing you could do about it. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Anyways, um, okay. we got some super chats. Yes, Geisha American gave us a super chat. Thank you, saying. America is founded by human trafficking ethnic cleansers. <laughs> Nations can change. The label terrorist is whoever loses. No. That's a no, bit no, simplistic. No, no, no. That, no, that's no, pretty no. simplistic. No. Yeah, that's that's like moral relativism to... No. Def ter terrorism has a specific definition that is not reliant necessarily on whether you lose or win. Yeah. Okay. Is that the only super chat we want to highlight? There was another one. I think. Uh, there was another one. Did no, there wasn't. One? Okay. I think we missed one. Okay. No, nope, we didn't. Good. Okay. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.